Hello, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming over here. It's it's great seeing all these faces in person, right? After countless Zoom hours, having such an in-person meeting is amazing. So thank you all again for coming over. And uh, I'm the next speaker. I'm going to talk about computer vision issues, and I'll uh, talk about our company in a minute. And uh, you know, over the Zoom meetings, I've tried to tell so many jokes, you know, but I never got a response. You know, I, nobody ever laughed. It turns out I'm not remotely funny. So <laughs> I did get a few laughs. So I'm in person funny a little bit. So <laughs> what I'm going to discuss today is uh, I'm going to talk about me and my company. What does our company do? I will talk about some of the common computer vision data collection challenges. Um, how do we solve those problems? Uh, what are the different solutions out there in the market that, that people are using? What are Shape's offerings? Some of the, the solution highlights that we have and some of the use cases that we have solved and how that can help uh, the audience sitting over here as well. So we'll discuss those things. Let's start with me. I'm the co-founder and the CRO for Shape. I, my years of educational and uh, industry experience has prepared me to talk both about technology and business. So I sit at this cross section about technology and business so I can see how we can apply the AI use cases to real world scenarios. And that's what I'm going to talk about in the next few minutes. Shape is a leader in the data collection and annotation category. Uh, we are a global leader in AI training data sets. Our platform leverages tech and human intelligence, human in the loop, along with the technology in place to create high quality AI training data. We work with Fortune 500 companies, as you can see over here, Amazon, Google, Echo, to some of those uh, yeah, younger startups and help them build their AI models. We sit a layer before the AI training models are built. We provide them the, the critical piece of providing them curated data so they can build a diverse, accurate data sets. So there are lots of computer vision data challenges that we have. And if you look at this, uh, this chart, there are so many use cases people are trying to solve. Some of them like generate images, home security videos, barcodes, drone videos, food cuisines, and some very unique we have seen. All of these are something that we have solved, like runway cracks and potholes, like identifying the stains and, uh, on, on cloths and fridge images. So very niche use cases and some very generic use cases that we have solved. One common thread connecting all these use cases is that all of them require gold standard training data to build their AI. The AI is as good as the quality of the training data. What we have also seen that all this burden of finding good annotated quality data falls on the data scientists. Today, data scientists spend about 80% of their time on data collecting, cleaning, and labeling. This is not what they were hired for. This is not the best use of their time as well. That's one of the biggest challenges, and, and a lot of people will, will concur here who are working in the, the data scientist field, that they are spending a lot of time in just finding the right data rather than working and refining the models which they are supposed to do. And on top of that, 44% of them feel that they don't have the complete data. The data is still incomplete. It's not diverse. It's not curated well. About 85% of AI projects would be delivering misleading data because it's a biased training models. And I'll show some real case examples in the, in the following slides that how the models are very biased and the data is not diverse in that case. So organizations do require a way to get diverse quality data for building AI, which is scalable and unbiased. So some of the classic examples of bias, and these are some real world examples we have seen. Amazon, while doing their uh, AI recruitment process, they favored a lot of male candidates over female candidates. As historical data showed that there were more men in the organization, and that is the data that they were using to build their AI recruitment tool, Male candidates were better suited than women candidate, and some of uh, some of them even went on to penalize the women for having that on their resume. A similar use case with Facebook. Facebook allowed brands to target customers based on religion, race, and gender. 
the AI models that showed ads on the requirements of, of nurses, secretaries to women and jobs to taxi drivers to, to men specifically with weaker financial background. All this showcases the importance of having a diverse data set which is unbiased. So we talked about the, the different uh, uh, kind of problems that the industry is facing, the data scientists are facing in terms of data. What are the different solutions out there that people are using today? One of the common ways most of the people will go to is open source. There are lots of them, Kigo, OpenML, uh, ImageNet, which is the largest uh, image data set out there. And people will go to this open source data set and say, hey, this will help me build up my, my training models. It will save us some cost as well. Why not do it? It turns out the quality is not as per the specifications. We had a customer who was trying to build a, a facial image recognition use case. They wanted to identify Asian folks within a group of people. They, they downloaded the database from ImageNet and all the database was Caucasian folks. How is that model going to turn out to be accurate? And that's one of the biggest problems with open data source. It's not catered to the use case that our company is trying to solve. So the quality is not as per the specifications. Obviously, you have to do a quality check on top of it, which increases the cost as well. And this may work during the testing phase, but during the, uh, the production, the models are completely inaccurate and biased. The second place most of the folks go in to find to train in data sets is internal sources. We have all heard this. We have terabytes and petabytes of data available internally. Let's just use that data. Why not use that data? What we have seen from the previous example, like Amazon has petabytes of data available with them. Facebook has the same thing, but it leads to a lot of missing database and a lot of bias. All the Amazon database, uh, the data that they had, favored male candidates over female candidates. Facebook's database targeted towards a specific audience, specific religion, gender, which introduced bias in their models. So internal sources may not suffice to have an accurate AI model. On top of that, you will require resources to, to process, transcribe, and tag the data. Additional project managers, HR people, annotators, all of those will be needed to do that. The third way to acquire training data set is where you can have a custom data collection platform where you are defining your specific needs, your niche use case, that we are looking for this specific use case to be solved. It is built to your specifications. There is a consistent quality in there and you can handle the complexity, you can start small and go big and try to solve this problem. So as you could imagine, we favor the third solution. We feel that having the custom data collection solution is the answer to solving computer vision data collection challenges. And I'll, I'll talk about some of the offerings that we have that Shape does in trying to solve this problem. So what we do is we can we help companies source images, videos, audio, text for computer vision use cases on our proprietary platform. We have presence in about 60 plus geographies and, and we have mobile apps and a platform to make sure that the data is diverse and unbiased as for the specifications to have an accurate training model. We also have curated data sets so you can license data off the shelf, which is an image, video, or any other use case which can cater to your specific uh, model that you are building for as well. And on top of it, if you have lots of internal data but you don't have resources to do that, we can provide an end-to-end -end data annotation platform as well and augment that with more data which can be collected from real world which can help you solve the data problem. So we talked about the, the problem, we talked about the solution that we think is the best fit in that. Let me walk you through how this entire thing works. We have three areas that we focus on covering the end-to-end -end data journey. A manage, a work, and an intelligence platform. 
the managed platform is where a product manager or a data scientist would come in and define the specific use case. If they are looking to collect um, images for facial recognition use case for a specific geography, location, age, gender, we can define all those different parameters and see how can we scale the data platform accordingly. We will have our workforce joining in from the other end as well so that we can find the right person who can contribute to that data or the right partners who can come in and provide the data to our platform. And finally, we have the AutoML ingested into our uh, platform, which can take care of all the, the data validations and all the data modeling, so that you don't have to worry about whether this data is going to be diverse to take care of all those different use cases. Is it going to be biased towards one end or not? Because that is taken care by, by the Shape Intelligence platform. So I'll talk through all three of them through an example. This is a high level way that how the training data platform works. On the left hand side, we have all the different data types that can be ingested into the platform. And on the right hand side, we have our contributors coming to the platform so that they can start working and contributing the data that you are looking for. Through our apps, we can do the data acquisition. And all these follows the GDPR, HIPAA, Safe Harbor, all the different guidelines that we can have. So the first step, a machine learning engineer or a data scientist or a product manager would come onto the platform and would define the different parameters. Here in the specific example, it's a facial image collection project where a customer is looking to build a facial recognition model. So they would come in and they would define that this is the task, this is the kind of data, these are the different ethnicities and different parameters that we are looking for on our platform. The project setup happens with defining that which is the environment we want to do the collection for, what are the different variations we are looking for, and execute as simple projects as just having two or three parameters to very complex projects with having multiple parameters and built as well as. As you could see from here, this is where our unique differentiator comes in. And this is where we have been seeing the biasness in some of the examples that I provided earlier. We can provide a metadata form filler which can define that what kind of gender we're looking for in the data, what is their age group, what countries, what is their skin tone, languages, uh, different kind of emails, whatever information we want to upload over here, we can define and have that kind of a contributor network come onto the platform so we can do that work. As a second step, we will identify the right workforce who can contribute to the data to this platform, whether they are independent vendors or our, our partners, or whether that's a crowd of, of participants who want to be taking part in this uh, platform. Once that is done, the customers will have the authority to look at it and say, hey, this is the data which will help us train our models, and this is the data which needs to be discarded. So that's approved versus disapproved. And once that is done, we, we have our own ML models built in which will take care of any blurry images, pixelated images, duplication of images. If it's not meeting a specific diversity criteria, if it is not meeting uh, a specific uh, ethnic group criteria, all those things are taken care by our data intelligence platform on there. Using this model of having to define the project, having the workforce coming onto the platform and auto-validating using various ML models, we have solved several use cases in data collection, which gives more accurate AI at the end. One of the use cases we have solved is food and document images. We have collected thousands of images in 50 plus variations, with shadow, without shadow, masked images, annotating them in whatever format and way that we are looking for, which can help create a model because the millennials today, before they even take a bite of a, uh, a a food, they want to take a photo. And, and this is where they accurately were building the model. This large uh, phone company was building this model where they want to accurately predict what kind of food and cuisine and everything is coming there. And that's the kind of use case we solved for them. Some of the other use cases, facial data collection and annotation. We have about 68 points, landmark annotations, uh, pedestrian image collection and annotation, 
ID card immersion and data collection to solve different use cases. All this can be solved on a platform where you can define the specific requirements, have the workforce come in and auto validate so that the data coming out is as per the specific niche use cases that you are solving. These are some of the other use cases that we have solved uh, regarding healthcare, regarding conversational AI, and vehicle damage detection model. This is one of the, the use cases we see uh, almost every day coming in. All right. Thanks. So in summary, we, we saw that data accuracy and diversity is the key for an accurate model. We saw the challenges the data scientists are facing. We saw the challenges in accuracy of data or not. And having a robust data collection a platform helps solve this data problem. Define the data diversity criteria, bring the right workforce on, and auto-validate the data so that it can give you the accurate models that you are looking for. Thank you so much. If you have more questions after this talk, I have my colleagues Ross and Priya here as well. So you can reach out to them. Thank you. Shape. Better AI data. Better results.